breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorming. Today, on this week's episode, we are going to break down a symptom, a condition. It's, it's kind of got a cult following, um, and that is brain fog. So if you or someone you, uh, you know suffers from brain fog, whether that's you know uh, struggling through a thought process, looking for words that you can't remember, forgetting where you put your keys, this is going to be the episode for you. Um, and if this is your first time uh, experiencing the content of this channel and you have common health or you have questions concerning your own health, um, you're going to want to hit like and subscribe and, and turn on the notifications so that when we cover your health condition, you don't miss it. Um, so without further ado, we're going to get rolling on this week's episode of Brainstorming. Let's get going right now. So uh, how's your week been going, my, my man? It's been going great. It's been going great. It's been busy. I can't believe that it's just halfway through, barely halfway through. It seems like the week is doubled. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, it seems like it never ends. You know what I mean? It seems like there's always one more thing. Like I go to bed thinking, oh, I didn't get this done or I, uh, I, did, I should probably should have put this tomorrow higher on my priority list tomorrow. Um, and then on top of that, like I've had a little bit of the crud and then we're supposed to go on vacation here shortly. So it's mm -hmm. just like, madness on top of madness on top of madness <laughs> i i think that makes perfect sense i think that i think what you hit on right there was a bit of a symptom of some brain fog oh of course yeah <laughs> feeling like you never get everything done feeling like you're you're struggling through your day like pff, to a t right or you forget everything and then there's a weird memory that comes up this of a, of a task or something you needed to do or needed to remember from three days ago and it just pops in your head um, why wasn't it there three days ago when it should have stayed there? Right. Yeah. No kidding. Right. <laughs> so yeah, this, this piece of brain fog, maybe I'll let you jump into it first. Yeah. So I mean, brain fog is a symptom that I get really, really commonly in my, in my practice. And it's something that people often aren't really, um, well equipped to describe when they're suffering from it. So unless you say, you know, they come in, they're like, I just don't feel myself. I feel like I'm, struggling. I feel like I'm, I'm not interacting as, as accurately or, or um, in, in as consistently as I was before with my day-to-day -day life. I feel like I am losing it a little bit. I feel extremely tired. I feel just like disconnected and you just, you know, I just feel like super foggy. Like, yeah, oh, like brain fog. Like, that's exactly yeah. what I, that's the common word phrase that I hear. I feel disconnected with the world or what's around me. Um, you know, there's this lady I work with she was on the other side of Denver, Denver, Colorado, with her kids. And, you know, they were, I don't know, five, six, seven years old. And, and then she just kind of came to and didn't realize why she was there. It's frightening. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How disconcerting would that be that yeah. you are like out with your kids and then you just all of a sudden you're like, I don't know how I got here or why I'm here. Uh -huh. Yeah. I see that a lot. I, I've had, I know I may have talked about it in other, other videos of ours and podcasts of ours, but I've had clients where they couldn't sit through a full hour in a consult. That was just too much. They couldn't retain that. It was 30 minutes max. So we're seeing this at younger and younger ages. That's the frightening thing. People in their twenties, you know, people 18, I've seen it 19. You don't have to be 85 years old and have some memory impairment or a lack of stamina or feeling like you have a foggy brain. It happens at a young age. So this, what we're going to talk about today, I think, is absolutely critical so people don't ignore these symptoms. Yeah, and I think that it's becoming more and more common. And I think that when I look at brain fog, I always look at what is the underlying cause? What, what are some of the other, you know, uh, concomitants that are causing this? You know, why is this pa patient doing it? I actually just read an article today that um, the the – occurrence of Alzheimer's and they're finding it in people in their thirties already. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It just came out today. Like that could be a, that could be a symptom or brain fog could be a symptom of that. Like this is why it's really important. If you are having these type of things where you're, you're having, you're struggling, uh, working your way through your life, you feel like you're disconnected. You f you're very forgetful and you know, you, you're, you've lost your sense of direction. Like, very important to get checked out because it really can just be like the tip of an iceberg type of deal. 
Exactly. And, and the brain isn't one of those things that should be shutting down before the rest of the body. So this whole era of dementia and Alzheimer's, entire hospital wards filled with dementia patients, people are starting to accept it. And after a certain age, they just say, oh, this is the way it's going to be. And this is normal. It's never normal. The brain is the final frontier. And I know you know that, Dr. Cole, because you're working with brains every day. And, and we can't accept the brain shutting down before the body. And brain fog is the earliest symptom of the brain stuttering, sputtering, I should say. Um, it's, it's early warning brain damage. Is that kind of how you'd say neural degeneration? Yeah, I mean, it could be. It could be neuroinflammation, neurodegeneration. It could be an autoimmune condition. I mean, there's, that's maybe a good segue so we can actually get right into like maybe what are some of the more common causes that we see. And this is by no means a, a comprehensive list of what all the causes of brain fog is. But these are just some common causes that we see in our practice. Um, and maybe this will give, if you're, you are suffering from it, maybe it'll at least give you a stepping point so you can start exploring or looking for someone who, who maybe can help you with some of this stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. let's just get started. I'm going to ask you, so if I were to ask you, you know, Dr. Glenn, if I were to come into your office and, and my biggest thing was, man, I'm fatigued, I f I'm very forgetful, I feel completely disconnected from my own life and my body and my environment. You know, I'm concerned because I'm, I'm forgetting what I'm going to the supermarket for. You know, what would like maybe your top three differentials be as far as like the causes of those of the brain fog? The causes. Yeah, I, I would, I, I would, one thing I guess would be blood sugar. Is blood sugar too high or, and getting too low? Is it dropping? Because that's the fuel source of the body. There's a lot of that. So I'd be asking questions about diet. Do they have severe sweet cravings? Do they have crashes in the, in the afternoon? So I would be, you know, hypoglycemia or episodes of it. The next thing, if you said you were tired, I would be like, well, how fatigued are you? Is your brain creating your body sensation to shut down or is it, or is there something else going on? That's oh, my little sidekick. I'm bored <laughs> <laughs> Order's over there. I don't think he has any brain fog. He, he wants to go outside. But um, that's... That would be the first thing. So I guess blood sugar would be one. The other one would be, um, why is there fatigue? Is it an indication of neuroinflammation? You know, is that something? So I think, I think the energy and the blood sugar would be two major pieces to it that, that I would be looking at first for, for a cause, I guess. For sure. I always look at thyroid health too. Okay. Automatically. And we've covered this in other podcasts too. So if you do have a thyroid issue and you're suffering from brain fog, you can refer back to that that podcast yeah, there'll, there'll, um, be a, there'll be a link. on the autoimmune thyroid issues. Um, yeah, but I, I would agree with that. If you're having brain fog, there's got to be an underlying issue. Basically, when I look at brain fog, your brain needs three basic things to function and function well, right? It needs fuel, it needs energy, and it needs activation, right? So it needs oxygen, it needs energy, and it needs stimulus. And basically, if you have brain fog, you're not getting one or multiple of those specific criteria that your brain needs to function and thrive at a high level. So then you look at, okay, what would maybe some of the causes be of lack of energy, you know, lack of energy molecules or ATP? Um, could it be that they are not eating a proper well-balanced diet? Could it be that their thyroid's out of whack? Or could it be that they're not getting enough oxygen? You know, do they have an, do they have a, you know, obstructive disease like COPD? Do they have asthma? Do they have emphysema? You know, all of these things can play a role in why the individual is suffering from brain fog. And that's really why you have to break down the condition and start investigating further. So, yeah. So that, that'd be like, like differentials. Um, I, I've seen chronic digestive issues like SIBO. I know we talked about SIBO before. There'll be a link below for SIBO so you can follow that uh, video. Uh, have you ever seen SIBO create brain fog? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. In fact, I had a patient today um, where I ran a big, big panel on him. It was an autoimmune panel because she was diagnosed with vitiligo and she came in and she was like, I don't, I've done everything. I don't know. It's not getting any better. Is, is there anything that you think that we can do together to help manage um, and stop the progression of this? Um, so quickly. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll look, right? So we ran some tests. We did some blood work. She came back. She had an autoimmune thyroid condition. Um, vitiligo is an autoimmune condition. Um, and then we looked at her and we did a stool sample and we broke down the microbiome. One of her symptoms was she's like, I'm just fatigued all the time and I'm super foggy. She goes, there's times where I look at my kid 
and like I'm just like what what, are you, what am I doing what are you doing what where are your pants at you know she got like a three-year-old she's like what am I doing here um so yeah it was super super you know nerve-wracking for her because she was just struggling and she actually has SIBO um so we got started on doing some some interventions there to help her manage those symptoms and I'm, I'm really sure that she's going to respond well to the care um, because she's going to be really uh, she's going to be really compliant so yeah. yeah but that's absolutely a symptom of SIBO that I've seen so, yeah I see SIBO if you're able to turn it around within 24 hours that fog lifts if you're able to so then everybody's case is different but and and I know you see a lot of TBIs do you see brain fog as a result of traumatic brain injury yeah yeah for sure you can get with TBIs and concussions and all that kind of stuff, it, it gets a little convoluted, but absolutely like you can absolutely get brain fog or like even that feeling of like vertigo or dizziness, mm -hmm. they just don't feel as connected with themselves or their environment as they did prior to the injury. Right. Mm -hmm. And that can be for a variety of reasons. We won't go super deep into those because it gets really complex really quickly. Um, but yeah, that's super, super common. Um, I just read an article where one of the main causes of like BPPV, which I think we've covered, mm -hmm. we actually, co we've covered a ton of this stuff in other parts. Yeah. yeah. So Definitely. if, if this yeah. is all new to you, uh, mm -hmm. go back through and look at some of that other stuff. Cause chances are we've covered maybe something that you're suffering from. Um, but yeah, one of the main causes of BPPV or like vertigo can be after a brain injury, you know, mm -hmm. or a traumatic brain injury or. So definitely, definitely a possibility as far as what are the onsets could be from that. So, yeah, I, I, I've seen concussions cause it. I, I guess the biggest thing is some people, if somebody is dealing with brain fog, they're following this, what we're doing here today. Um, I guess the first question for them is, is ask themselves uh, when the onset was, is it a daily thing? Is it, is it been chronic? And it's, it, 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 when the onset was, when it happened, when it started, if they can remember when it started. Yeah, was there a defining incident that it started mm -hmm. after, you know, I oh, think it's a car accident and all of a sudden I have brain fog. It hasn't gone away. Yeah. Or maybe it's a car accident that wasn't diagnosed as you weren't diagnosed as a, with a concussion. You see that. Right. Yeah. So, um, or was it after a pregnancy, autoimmunity tripping it or a digestive problem? Um, was yeah there, so I, I guess uh, trying to identify that's the first place to go and then ultimately working with a provider that would be ideal i have seen gluten create this problem you probably as well oh, yeah for yeah, sure it's for like sure. the brain shuts off in fact me if i if i get exposed to gluten um i'll start to get a foggy brain i'll lose my mental stamina so i can't read as long without falling asleep or dozing off or drive as long if I'm, if I'm exposed to gluten. So, well, a lot of people don't understand when they think that, you know, Oh, I'm sensitive to wheat or I'm sensitive to gluten, but there's, there's a bunch of different types of proteins that are contained in a, you know, in a kernel of wheat or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and it, you can react. In fact, that patient I had today, she reacts to gluteomorphin, you know, and she she, she's actually like, yeah. So she's, I mean, she's actually physically addicted to uh -huh. coffee because it triggers those, those, uh, those morphine receptors, mm -hmm. but that's not the only one, you know, she's, she's responsive to gluteomorphin. She's got gluadin, glutinins, and these are all different things. You know, these can cause differences in neurotransmitters. They mm -hmm. can mess with your neurotransmitters. Uh, what's the proteonorphin and it messes with your endorphin receptors. So it can actually change, you know, the way you're feeling. So you almost feel like euphoric afterwards. But yeah, I mean, even oh. even stuff like food sensitivities can definitely cause or change the way. Yeah, it can shut can shut the brain down. It can actually shut it down. And 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 I guess I just want to reiterate: if anybody has brain fog, don't ignore it. I, I had a lady that she was doing the bar exam, and that I've never done it, <laughs> but she she took the bar exam and. The first time she did it, she fell asleep twice during it. That's a high stress exam. The That's a pretty stressful came, exam to be falling asleep. Yeah, at. the proctor walked around and shook her to make sure she was awake. And, and it was because her brain was shutting down. Needless to say, she failed the exam. But then when she came in, that was just one of the things. She was dealing with such a foggy brain that <clears throat> she, had, she had a hard time to function. There was another lady I just finished up with a month ago, and she, she couldn't drive to the office she couldn't drive to the office because her brain fog was so bad that she didn't trust herself on the street. And, you know, she was, you know, she, she's extremely intelligent and it came on quite quickly because she had multiple infections in her body. 
and autoimmunity. So all that neuroinflammation, I think we touched on that brain inflammation. So many things can add to our um, brain inflammation. So, uh, so we don't get, I know you and I, we talked about this, we could get tangled up in the weeds and end up in, I don't know, Japan by tomorrow talking about this stuff. What about, what would be, when we see, when you see brain fog and someone comes in and they're frustrated in your office, what they, maybe they've already been through the medical gauntlet. What strategies has the medical model gave them for brain fog? Oh, man, there's not really a good answer to this because that was a trick question. I, <laughs> I have seen people who come in on, you know, like meclizine, people who come in on Imitrex for like headaches. Um, meclizine would be for like vertigo. Um, it really depends. Some people come in on, you know, antidepressants. Uh -huh. um, so it really depends on kind of what their symptoms are. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it, obviously, if they're in my office, it has not worked well for them in the most, yeah. for the most part. Um, and then as far as like the way that I go about um, trying to help is I do a lot. I, well, I do an in-depth in comprehensive exam. I do a neurological exam where I do like a cranial nerve exam, peripheral nerve exam. I do, you know, cerebellar testing, basal ganglionic testing, all this kind of stuff to try to identify, you know, if, if there is issues where, where they're having them. And then it, that kind of helps me localize how I'm going to apply some therapies. I do a lot of lab testing to make sure that there's no sort of co like infections. Um, you know, whether, I mean, it could be even be like candida, you know, candida can cause, you know, brain fog, which is like a yeast infection. I have patients that have yeast infections. One of their big thing was brain fog. Um, so I do uh, laboratory testing and stuff like that. And then afterwards, we just try to kind of apply what we've learned in a therapeutic setting. You know what I mean? We try to uh, develop a, uh, you know, a plan where we can apply therapies and interventions and some strategies that they can use at home so that they can try to make, you know, long-term changes to not only like the, the neurochemistry, but the biology and the physiology so that they are op operating at as close to as optimal as possible. Yeah. And it's, it's never just shooting from the hip on this. That's why you're doing such a thorough exam or a thorough lab workup. My office, we focus on a lot of labs and you use a lot of labs too, but you, I know your exams, your neuro exam are much more comprehensive than, than mine but using both those tools to look for the deficiencies and be very specific in what intervention you need to do to overcome this brain fog. One thing that I learned is brain fog is never by itself. There's never somebody feeling fine and have all this energy and just my brain is foggy. Never, ever, ever, ever. There's always other symptoms going on, whether it's a GI symptom, pain symptoms. Um, what other symptoms do you see associated with? brain fog. Oh, I mean, it could be, you Any know, other. following a, a TBI, you know, brain injury. I've seen, I literally have seen it, a, a thyroid thing. Thyroid is like a big yeah. one for me, honestly. Yeah. If they come in with, with, oh man, I'm just like having a ton of difficulty concentrating and I'm forgetful and I'm like, mm, I'm going to run a thyroid. I run a thyroid on pretty much everybody. Yeah. But that's a big, big, uh, big mm. one for me. And then food sensitivities. I had a lady who her mother was had Alzheimer's and she actually just passed away recently. But, you know, she came into my office. She was like, I'm worried I'm getting it. I'm forgetting where I'm putting my keys. I'm worried. I'm forgetting where I'm driving. And we did a ton of testing with her. We found out, I'm like, oh, she, you know, she got some sort of infection or some sort of autoimmunity, ran a bunch of autoimmune panels, figured out all the stuff that was triggering her. We put her on a, a program to remove all those triggers. And after like eight weeks, she came in, she's like, I feel like I'm a completely different person. You know, yeah. So it is. It is achievable. Um, you just have to find the right resources to do that. That's right. That's exactly right. The <clears throat> the I know we talked uh, about alternative, like the labs, the neuro testing. One thing a person should never forget about the, any kind of sleep deprivation will always make brain fog worse. Always, always, always. Very seldom it's the only source, but it will make it worse. Um, most people with enough brain fog, they need to sleep more usually because everything is shutting down. But I guess to summarize, to summarize what the brain and how sensitive it is, is maybe that's exactly what it is. We got to remember how fragile the brain is and how sensitive it is to our environment, what we're putting in our body, what we're exposed to and how we, how we live our life. And, and, and because of its sensitivity, it's actually a weak link and it'll start, you know, you'll see a lot of deficiencies. Would you agree with that? 
Yeah, I would. I think it's also to important, like also important to, to talk about like your brain actually has a barrier that surrounds the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's called the blood brain barrier. It's uh, it's not high. It's, it's very selectively permeable, semi permeable. It only allows certain things in or out. Um, so if you have a lot of brain fog, the chances are that your blood brain barrier could potentially be leaky and things that are getting through there so that the immune system is the immune cells in your brain or in your central nervous system are then triggered or activated is a higher likelihood than not. So if you have a lot of brain fog, then you need to really explore getting it looked at because it could be something, you know, a little bit more serious than, mm -hmm. than even just like a thyroid thing. So, yeah, I think that might be a good topic in the future. Talk about leaky brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Let's do it. <laughs> that could be a follow up of this. So, um, I think that's, I think that's kind of a wrap. Was there, did you have anything else to add? No, I didn't. Um, obviously if you guys got, you know, uh, benefit out of this or you feel like the information was pertinent and you know, you feel like your friends or family or loved ones could benefit from this, please share it with them. Um, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you have any other questions, you can reach us at info at brainstorming with the docs.com, or you can get our websites. Mine is www.northlakeschiropractic.com. Dr. Glenn's is, uh, triple W dot DRG Harrison.com. And both of those will be in the link, um, yeah. or in the wow. show description. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if, the, if there's, uh, anything that you'd like us to break down or you have any questions or whatever, please free to con feel free to contact with us. Yeah. And, and also the links to uh, other, our thyroid content and I'll put the brain gut connection and SIBO. So you can understand what SIBO is if you haven't heard of it. Um, but if you have any digestive symptoms, highly recommend watching these so you know what to do. There's a lot of pieces to this puzzle of brain fog, but never ignore it because it only gets worse. It only gets worse with time and you can turn it around if you catch it early enough. So yeah, I think this went super well today. So I think we knocked it out of the park and I cannot wait to do the next one. Cause I think the next one, what do we talk about doing intermittent fasting, which I yeah. think would be like a really, really good, good topic. Uh, we've got like a, <clears throat> excuse me, we got like a list of five or 10 things that we'll, we're going to explore, but I'm pretty stoked to, uh, to bring you some new information next week. So stay tuned. All right. Well, you have a great night, Dr. Colby. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.